Yo, what's up guys and welcome back to a new video. Today we are gonna look at the Throne of Tides. So make sure you have your diver's equipment ready and let's take a dive straight into the dungeon. We start the dungeon facing a pretty spicy pool. First off, we have to look out for the Nashjar Oracles. They will cast Water Bolt on random targets dealing mediocre damage. Secondly, they will cast Healing Wave, which you will always want to interrupt. And lastly, they will cast Hex. This is a priority kick since it will polymorph the target for 5 seconds. Other than the oracles, we'll have to look out for the revenues pursuit from the vicious snapdragons in this pool. Next up, we'll face two oracles and a sentinel. The sentinel has two abilities. Firstly, the sentinel casts a tank buster called Shellbreaker, dealing a chunk of damage. Secondly, the sentinel will cast crushing depths on a random target, putting a large health absorb on the player, which you will need to heal through to remove. Try to do this as fast as possible though, to prevent the player from dying from the water balls from the oracles being cast at the same time. Before moving up to the upper area, we face a demi-boss called the Nashjar Ravager. This mob seems more intimidating than it is, largely because it has a huge HP pool. You'll want to keep an eye out for Volatile Bolt, targeting a player and indicating their position with a big green swirly. When the cast is done, this will launch a big toxic patch on that spot, dealing massive damage if standing in this area when it lands. Other than the Volatile Bolt, we'll see the Ravager use Acid Barrage. This will deal damage in a frontal cone, spinning out acid. So make sure you're not in front of the Ravager when this ability goes off, and you should be fine. Moving to the upper area, we find only a few mobs, and largely the same mobs we've already encountered before. So let's a take a look into the Nashar Tempest Witch, which will be the first new mob we'll face. The Witch will cast Lightning Bolt on random players for some mediocre damage. Whenever you have a kick left over, feel free to use it on these mobs, but do keep in mind that we'll also need to stop the healing wave and the hex from the oracles too. Now that we've dealt with the hallway, we face one of the most dangerous areas in the dungeon. You'll find a room with a ravager and multiple packs with witches and oracles in them. We've already covered what all of them do, so let's talk about how to deal with this. Usually you will want to split the room up in at least three pools. If you're tanking this dungeon, you will want to make sure that you have enough AoE stops or CCs available to deal with many mobs you would like to pull. A lot of groups tend to lose the pools in this room since they are so dangerous with the amount of kicks needed while also being targeted with revenues pursuit in the meanwhile. To do this room efficiently, you'll most likely want to drag the Ravager along clearing the packs one by one because the Ravager has so much more of an HP pool than the rest of these mobs. After we've dealt with all of the trash in the last room, we'll face the first boss being Lady Nasjar. The main ability of this boss is Water Bolt. She will cast this throughout the fight on random players and you will want to interrupt this whenever you can to stop players from taking unnecessary damage. The second ability we'll see is Focus Tempest. This will do random lightning damage to players and there's not much more to do than just heal through it. Next up we'll see Shock Blast. This will target a player indicated by a blue swirly around them. This ability will do some minor to mediocre damage to the targeted player and also cleave on the players who stand in the circle, so make sure to move out of it. And lastly, we'll see Geysers. Water Swirlies will appear on the ground, which we will simply have to move out of to prevent a chunk of damage. When the boss reaches 60 and 30% HP, we get an intermission stage called High Tide. During this time, multiple ads will spawn throughout the room, which we will need to kill to be able to attack the boss again. Do be careful though, since multiple water, water swirlies will be thrown around the room till we've dealt with this, so make sure to move out in time. When we've dealt with Lady Nasjar, we instantly get thrown into the second boss fight being Commander Ultok. This boss is pretty straightforward, so let's get straight into what he actually does. Firstly, the boss will use Crushing Claw on the tank, being your basic tank buster. Second on the list, we'll find Bubbling Fissure. This ability will spawn void swirlies underneath the positions of the players. You would want to bait this properly because we need the room for later and it's important for an upcoming mechanic. Next up we see Festering Shock. This ability will knock everyone back, dealing quite significant damage. If you can however position the boss properly, you can actually LOS this mechanic, avoiding the knockback and the damage from it. Periodically the boss will cast Awaken Ooze. This will spawn an ooze in the void puddles we placed earlier. These oozes will start to follow you around, so make sure to kite away from them to not take a load of damage. Next up, we'll finally face some new mobs. First up, we'll face the Faceless Seer. This mob will cast Mind Flay and you will want to interrupt this as much as possible to prevent a lot of channel damage into the targeted player. The second mob we find is the Faceless Watcher. This mob will cast Clenching Tentacles, which drags all the players into the center of the mob and it will start casting Shadow Smash. 
Shadow Smash is indicated by a big purple circle around the seer and you will need to move out of this to not get one shot. Lastly we will see the minion of Gursha. These mobs, they don't really do much other than doing some pulsing damage. While fighting the faceless seers, it is important however to note that void beams will go throughout the room which you will want to avoid. For boss number 3 we'll see Arunak's Stone Speaker. Once again a pretty straightforward boss with only a few abilities we need to watch out for. Firstly the boss will use Flame Shock throughout the fight, dealing quite a chunk of damage. So healers, make sure to keep an eye out for the party to heal them up quickly. Secondly we'll deal with the Storm Flurry Totem. This will summon a totem which will increase the attack speed of the boss by 100% and it does ticking damage till the totem gets killed. As last ability the boss will use Earth Fury. This will make Swirly spawn every half second for a total of 2 seconds. Just avoid these to prevent taking a significant hit. When the boss reaches 25% we'll instead fight Mindbender Kursha. This boss will you only use 2 abilities and they are very easily dealt with. Firstly the boss will use Mind Rot. This will damage all the players for some minor to mediocre ticking damage. And secondly the boss uses Terrifying Fission. This ability will charge up for 6 seconds and will fear everyone that isn't out of line of sight. To combat this, just move behind the pillar and you'll be able to deal with this quite easily. Now that we've dealt with the third boss we can move on towards boss 4. But before we get there we'll have to fight our way through a gauntlet type hallway where we will find uh, some mobs with noticeable abilities. First up we'll fight some Gil Goblin Hunters and Aqua Mages. The Mages will cast Aqua Blast and it will do minor damage if it goes through. The Hunters will do some random damage to players with their Poison Spear and Throw Spear. So this pack shouldn't really bring you too many issues. The next mob on the list however is a lot more difficult to deal with. This mob is called Tainted Sentry and has a very dangerous cast we'll have to live through. Whenever the Sentry casts Swell, the entire group will take a massive amount of damage when this happens. And as of our last hotfix, we will not be able to purge this anymore. So healers be ready to have some big healer CDs ready for when this happens. With the last bit of trash out of the way we can finally start fighting the last boss on the list which is Ozumat. This boss can either be a breeze or a nightmare depending on how you play it. So make sure you use the strategy for this boss to make it a lot easier to deal with. Firstly the boss will target 3 players with blooding barrage. This will be seen by a big purple circle around them and when the cast completes you will want to have all 3 circles as close together as possible in a triangular form. Everyone will take a chunk of damage and a patch of ink will be left on the place where you got hit. If you stand inside of this patch of ink he will take significant damage so make sure to move out of it as fast as possible. Next up the boss will cast a frontal called Merc Spew. So make sure to just move out of this to take unnecessary damage. Next up two players will be targeted by a beam of water. Making them immune of taking damage from the ink patches left before. You will want to move to the ink patches you've left before with this water beam standing on top of them cleaning the patches of ink. If you do this correctly you can clear all the patches of ink every time so make sure you don't run out of room. If you do not clear the patches they will grow in size however so make sure to use this time properly. Lastly the boss will use Putrid Roar. This ability will spawn multiple ink mobs around the room which you will need to cleave down with the boss and when you kill the ink sludges they will spawn another patch of ink under them so make sure you kill them in a convenient spot. Whenever you kill Ozumat you will all be infused with water and you will have to kill the octopus sitting in the wall. During this time you will deal 2000% increased damage so make sure to pump up those numbers a little bit, fix the overalls and have fun. And that is pretty much everything there is to cover about Throne of Tides. I think this is one of the harder dungeons in the map pool at the moment and it will be quite interesting to see how healers will combat the gauntlet with the swells dealing that much damage as it is right now. Anyways, thank you for watching, make sure to give a thumbs up if you like the video and consider subscribing. If you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments down below or ask them while I'm streaming live on twitch.tv slash juventustv. And I hope to catch you in the next one.